Hello and welcome everybody, this is Roland Hartman from GraphicInMotion.com and I'm back with another Stardust tutorial for Superluminal.tv. In this tutorial we will create this really awesome animation of this 3D character and you see he is performing some breakdance moves and it is actually an OBJ sequence here that we will use. Of course we will use Stardust to create this and we will create some particles, we will apply some physics to them and then I will show you how to set up some of these materials and how to create the volumetric light. So we have a lot to cover, let's jump right into After Effects and let's get started. As always, first of all, I will create a new composition and I'll just use the HDTV preset for this project. Make it 10 seconds long. Let's create a new solid and name it Stardust and I will apply the Stardust effect. The first step is to import our OBJ sequence and therefore I don't need this emitter and this particle node, so I will just delete them and I will create a new model node. Make sure the source is set to file, which is actually the default, and then open up the file properties and click on this all here. This way you can browse your hard drive and you can load your OBJ. So this works exactly the same for an OBJ and also for an OBJ sequence. In a sequence you just select the first object or the first file in your sequence and click OK. And now you see immediately that my OBJ is already here. It doesn't move yet and this is because I have to activate this load sequence here. So just click this checkbox and then you see now my animation is here. Cool. Maybe you wonder why we only have a silhouette in the scene. This is because I have no light in the scene, so we'll just add a quick light here and I will just use a parallel light for now. Make the intensity 100 and the radius bigger. Okay. And now you can see that this is actually a 3D mesh and it is actually a low polygon mesh. Now in the model properties I will just scale this up a little bit, so 300 and now I will position it properly, so let me move to the end of this animation. I want it to be in the middle of my composition here, so let's say maybe something like 75 and then I also shift it on X, maybe minus 65. Looks quite nice, let's see how the animation looks, yeah that's fine. Okay. Now I want to add my floor and I will make my floor again with a model node and this time we will use a primitive so we'll change the model source to a primitive and I will use a cylinder here. Let's increase the size on X to something like 750 and let's change the size on Y to 20 and this creates this disk now. So to align these properly we will change into our front view for a moment and inside my model properties now I can just move it down so that it aligns nicely with his feet. And I want to be a little bit careful that I have no intersection so I prefer that there is a small gap because if there is an intersection then I can get problems with the particles because we will emit the particles actually from the mesh. So you know we just line it up something like that should be good. Let's take a look here in the active camera and I think that this will work. Yeah, this, this doesn't look too bad. Actually, it looks quite nice. Okay. Good. Now, I will just quickly rename my notes here that I don't get lost. So this is my floor and this is my dancer. Dancer. Okay. Now, we can take a look how we can emit particles from our OBJ and this is actually very easy. So we just create an emitter and we create a particle node and let's link these two together and now we tell the emitter that we want to emit instead of a point from an object and we want to tell the emitter which object it should use and therefore we just duplicate our dancer uh, model node so let's just select it and press ctrl D and I will rename this one here to dancer emission and I can now link this 
to my emitter directly here in the same port as the particles. So let me rearrange this a bit, like so. Okay, so far so good. Now you see that there are already some particles and they are obviously also following the movement of my, of my dancer, but something is wrong and if I take the speed off you will see what's happening here and actually our our little dancer is already performing something like a head spin he's just upside down here you know the the particle dancer and this is just because of this flip this is activated by default and if you uncheck it then that these two line up properly okay now we have some particles awesome so let me show a few options that you have got when you are emitting from OBJs. Let me turn off my dancer model for a moment that we can look at the particles. And let's make these a bit more attractive, visually attractive. Therefore I scale them down, give them a color and set them to add. Just that we see what's going on with these different options because there are actually different options of emitting. And I want to show you these. Right now, I increase the particle count just that we see what's going on. The emission is set to edge. And you can see this quite nice that we get this kind of a grid here. And this is actually exactly a representation of the polygons of this 3D model. So the particles are just born along the edges. And then we have the possibility to emit from the vertices. Looks like that. And vertices are the points on a model and then we have the possibility to emit from the volume that will fill the inside of our dancer that's also very cool it's a little bit slower to calculate but really nice you can create awesome effects with this and then we have phase which creates one uh, particle per polygon and we have the surface which just distributes them more or less randomly over the surface this is also a very nice look and in our case, I think that we will just use edges and we will reduce this quite a bit to 200. Okay, uh, one thing that I want to mention, if I increase the speed now, let me increase this just again for a moment. And you see now the particles are flying out from my dancer, but you also see that they are moving with the movement of this model. So they are not uh, staying where they are born, they are, they are moving the whole particle cloud is moving with the dancer. So this can be quite cool if you want to create certain effects, but in our case, this is absolutely not what we want to achieve. So you saw that in my preview video, these particles fell down and dropped to the floor. And yeah, we have to work on this a little bit here. Okay, so let's set this up. First of all, I reduce the particles per second to 200. Then I will just zero out the speed for now. And I also want to change the particle shape because I want to use 3D models here. And in this case, I want to use spheres. And therefore, I need another model node that I can link into my particles node and tell it that we want to use a primitive. And we want to use a sphere. Good. Now let's reduce the segments here to 12 times 12. This way it will just be a little bit faster to calculate. And I will increase the size again, something like 50. And let's change the random size to 75. Now we have nice big particles. And this looks also quite funny, you know, a dancing balloon man or whatever. But I want to add some physics to this setup now. If you are not familiar with physics and Stardust, then I would recommend that you check out my basic introduction to Stardust physics. I made a tutorial a while ago about this. I will not go through all the basics. I will just show you how to get the results that we want. But of course we need a physical node. So let's add in a physical node. And now we have to connect the physical node to our particles. So we will not connect it to the model. We will connect it directly into our particle node. And to make this work, we have to turn on physics. And you will see in a moment what's happening when I turn on physics now. We get this alert and that says to simulate, please save the project. This is very essential. So remember that before you turn on your physics, 
you have to save your project. And the explanation is pretty simple. Stardust needs to needs a path on your hard drive to save a cache. So it, it needs to save the data that is created by this physical data and the calculations. It needs to save it to your hard drive. Okay, now I saved my file and now I can turn on the simulation. And you see immediately something is happening. So I will create a quick run preview, but before I do that, let me just change a few settings here in the render settings. I will just change this to medium. This will just make it a bit more fluent. And I also change it to half in the resolution because then we will have a better response here. And you see it's really responsive. And yeah, you see the, the particles fall to the ground, but they are of course not colliding yet because we didn't tell them that this is actually also a physical object and we will do that now before we do that let me go into the floor node again or the floor model node and change the segments because i see right now that this has not enough segments for our purpose so i will add the segments or increase the segments on x to 128 but i don't need many on y so i will just put in three here could also use one probably but three should be enough now it's a nice disk. And now I want to add in another physical node and link it to my floor. But this time we have to do a few changes. So first of all, you see now it's gone. And this is because it's also um, it, uh, affected by gravity and it just falls down. So you see in the beginning here, it's still visible and then it just drops. But we do not want this. And you can just set this to kinematic. And now it is a static mesh, but we can create collisions. You see that now it doesn't work. And this is because this simulate using is set to sphere. And this is, of course, everything else in a sphere. So we have to set this to model. Now, if we take a look, you see, oh, yeah, we are getting some collisions here. Awesome. Good. This is working nicely. And now I will bring in my dancer again. So I will just unhide it. And I also want these to collide with the model itself. So let's do that. Let's add in, or let's actually take this physical node here and just duplicate it, the one from the floor, because we need exactly the same settings for our dancer. And let me just rearrange this a bit nicer. I will bring this here down here, bring the floor up here, and that it's not a total mess here. Okay, and now let's take a look whether this worked, whether we have a few more collisions now. And if you take a close look, yeah, we're getting some collisions from our Lancer. That's good. Okay, so I want to change two more things before I calculate my final or before I calculate my final cache here. I want to change the size over life of the particles. So let's go into my particle node and change over life size. I will use a simple preset here. We have this fade in out Bezier and apply it. This way they will just grow and then fall to the floor and then they will fade off again. It's nice. And I also want them to, to spread out a little bit. So I will go to the emitter and set a certain value of speed, maybe 100, and maybe with a speed variation of 25. Let's take a look how this looks like. Yeah, this looks quite funny. Maybe it's a bit too strong, so maybe I should just reduce this to 75. Let's take a look. Yeah, this looks really nice. So I will stay with these values for now. And you see now that we have a few problems here. Some of these spheres get stuck inside the model here and I, I, I don't like that. And I can change that maybe by manipulating the size of life even further. So if I just bring this in here a bit, maybe to a value of, let's say seven, and just make this here a little bit flatter, not that steep, maybe they shoot out before they grow. Maybe we'll not get that many intersections here. I will just take a look how this affects our simulation. And yeah, actually, this is quite nice. So this is 
this is more or less working. They need a little bit more time to grow, but they are not sticking inside the model anymore. That's good. And now at a certain point in time, I just want to turn off the emission. So actually, let's take this moment where he lands his backflip. So right here, we will just turn it off. Boom. And this is frame number 165 in my case. And here I will just turn off the emission by setting a keyframe to the particles per second, moving forward one frame and set it to zero. Good. So I think that this is my simulation. Let's let's create a quick run preview. Yeah, this looks cool. That's fine. And you see they are nicely co colliding with his body. And then they just fall to the ground and fade out. Cool. Now to simulate the final animation, I will increase the quality of the simulation a little bit. So I actually maybe we'll go to very high. I think it's not necessary to go to extreme. And let's take a look here. I will just cache in out and see what this does. Looks quite good. And you also see how fast this is going because After Effects is actually calculating the physics and it is also rendering the preview here. So that's really cool. And then he has still this one on the head. Yeah, that's nice. I like this animation. That's good. Cool. So now we are finished with our simulation and I don't want to change this anymore. And if I don't want to change it anymore, then I can just set it to freeze, turn off the auto cache just to make sure. And now you see that I can scroll through my timeline and the simulation is still there without any legs. That's really awesome. And freeze just means that now Stardust loads the data that it saved to the hard drive. And no matter what I do now, it will have no effect on my animation. So for example, if I go to my model here and increase the segments, so to 24, 24 times 24 now, because actually 12 by 12 is a little bit rough. So let's take a look here in full mode. And you will see now the spheres are nice, nice and round. Now we don't see it that good because I still have the render quality on medium, but I don't care now. I know that 24 times 24 is enough for the size of these spheres. And yeah, that looks pretty good. So now it's time to make this look a little bit more beautiful. So we will assign some materials and some textures. Therefore, I go to the project window, double click and import my textures. Just a few simple black and white textures. And by the way, if you want to follow along this tutorial, you can download the whole project, this, this final project of this tutorial with all the assets included on the superluminal.tv website. Now I will create a new folder and just put my textures in there so that it's at least a little bit organized here. Okay. And now let's create some materials. So first of all, we will add a material node and we will start with our, let's start with our, no, actually let's start with our floor. And for the floor, I want to use a preset. There are actually also material presets. So let's go to the preset browser and click here. And inside the 3D library, there are also some materials included. By the way, if you don't have the library, you can download it here, but it only works with a full version of Stardust. So this is not included in the, the trail version. And I will use this concrete texture here and just add it to my scene. And this will add a cube here that we don't need. So let's just delete this. But let's take this concrete material node and bring it over to my floor. 
Okay. And now the texture is applied. That's good. And now I will add a material to my model, to my sphere here. And right now the color changes, and this is because my diffuse is set to color from particle 100. If I set this to zero, then the color from the particles will not influence the color of my material here. Now let's create some textures, or let's apply some textures. So let's say we want to use these squares here. I will just use the squares and drag it on the icon to create a new composition. You see this is just a square filled with small rectangles. And I have to change the resolution here, the size of this composition, because if I use it as a one-to-one -one ratio, then it will be distorted if I project this on a sphere. So spheres should have a ratio of two to one, and that's why I just divide the height by two. Now I have a nice two to one ratio, and I will just increase the scale on Y that we get rid of these small edges there. And now we will bring this into our original composition and just hide it. And now I can use it in my Stardust materials. So let's go to my material node and let's add it as a diffuse texture. And immediately see what this does. Now we have these nice patterns on our sphere. Cool. Uh, to change the overall look to a bit more of a metallic look, I could now just increase the, the roughness, or in this, in this case we are, and the glossiness, so increase the glossiness, something like that. And we can also increase the reflection, now they get darker, because there is not much to reflect, so we could put in here a texture or an environment but for now I will not do it. I will just use the things that I have in my scene. So I will just leave it as it is here. Something like that looks quite nice. And I can also change the look here by changing the colors of my texture. So if I apply a tint effect here, for example, let's use a tint effect and apply it. And if I change this just to demonstrate to some different colors, so I will just map the black to this bluish color and I will map the white to this pink color and now let's take a look and you see what this does. This will just now take over these colors and looks quite nice. But in my case I don't want to go for these fancy looks, I will just go for a dark grey and in this case plain white. Pretty boring, like that. Okay, so to make this a little bit more interesting, this material, I could use another texture. And actually, we have these textures in here, these concrete textures that came in when I created or when I added this preset. And I will just use this roughness JPEG here and create a pre-comp. And I will use it or try to use it on my material. Maybe it will increase the quality and the look a bit. So... Of course, I have to drag it into my project. So let's drag this into the project and make it invisible. And now inside my material here, I will add it to my roughness. Let's take a look what this does. And you see it flattens it out a bit, but it also adds some texture. We cannot see that very good now because the resolution is a bit small and also the material is not perfect, but I will, I will leave it in here because in the other materials that I will create now, it will look a little bit more interesting. So talking about that, let's just create another one. So let's duplicate the model and the material node, select both of them and press Ctrl D on the keyboard to create a duplicate. And now we'll just link them to my particle node. Inside the particle node, I have to change the use models from all to random because otherwise it will just overlap. And if you put in random, then it will distribute the models randomly to the particles, which is actually what I want. And now we can change the appearance of material number two a little bit. Therefore, I will use another of our textures. So let's go with these waves here, create a new comp, change the composition size again, divide by two in height, good, and drag it into our composition, make it invisible, and now apply it to our material. And first of all, it will apply it, of course, into our um, into our diffuse texture, and you see what this does. It looks also quite nice. 
and I also want to change the colors here. So let's go to our waves and let's again apply a tint. But this time we will use different colors. And this time I want to create something like a metallic golden look here. Let me take a look where I can find the right color. It's always a bit difficult to eyeball this. Something like that, maybe. Let's take a look. No, that's not quite there yet. I think I need a bit more red. Maybe something like that. Oh, that looks a little bit strange. It's always a bit difficult to find the right values here. Yeah, that's a bit better. Not quite, not perfect, but a bit better. Now I will change these a bit. So I want to make these a bit more glossy, just that they look a little bit different than the other ones. And another thing that you can do, you can also put, for example, the same texture, this wave texture here, inside the reflection, for example. So if I do that, you see what this uh, does now. It will change the look even further. And I can also put it into the bump. So let's do that as well. Let's put it into the bump, our waves. And let's increase this quite a bit to 100. And now everything turns black. And this is because we have the wrong setting here. So you have this normal and bump. And the normal maps are these kind of maps. I will just show you this. These kind of yeah, colored maps. And our map is black and white. So we will use it as a bump. So we will just change this here. And you will see that this works now. I can do actually the same in this material. Just add it to the bump. We will use our squares here, add it to the bump, change it to bump map, and also put in a value of 100. And you will see, yeah, it's not really obvious, but it pushes out these squares a little bit. And I will also add it to the reflection. Yeah, cool. Okay. And let's create one more, just a quick one. Duplicate this one more time. Connect it to our particles. I will just drag it, let's say up here, doesn't matter. And let's go into this material. Use another of these nice textures, these circles here. Create a new composition, composition settings. You're already familiar how this works. Divide by two. Okay. And drag it in here. Make it invisible and apply it inside these material drop-downs here. First of all, inside the diffuse, inside the reflection, and also inside the bump. And if you take a look here now, this looks a little bit weird. I don't want these to be black with these, these uh, metallic dots. I want this to be inverted, and that's pretty simple. I can just use either an invert, but actually I want to use a tint because then I have a bit more control. Just swap the colors and you see what this does. And I can just, instead of a plain white, I will use a grayish color here. Something like that. Let's take a look. Now they look a little bit different at least. Okay, good. Now we have some different materials and you can keep playing here, changing the settings, maybe make these again a bit more metallic less reflective, whatever you want. You could also add an environment and yeah, play around here even longer. But I want to just add a quick material to our dancer here. And therefore I will borrow this material here. I will just duplicate this. And actually now I duplicated the model as well, which I don't need. I just need this material node. And I want to add it to my dancer. So let's get rid of the material that was imported with the OBJ. And this actually was important because I already applied a material when I created this in Cinema 4D. So now you see that this looks like a total mess. And yeah, this is because, to be honest, I did not UV unwrap this guy. So this is this this is a bit of a mess, this, this mesh and this object. But there is actually a way how you can uh, solve this problem and you go to the model node and then inside texture mapping you have this UV map option and if you change this from model to planar for example 
then it will project this this texture just right plane planar yeah projected planar so like a frontal projection onto your mesh and actually in this case this looks quite nice so i think this is not not the bad thing but i want to change the texture so let's go to our textures and we have these nice strokes here and i will just create a new pre-comp this time i don't want to change the i don't want to change the resolution i will leave it as a square resolution and i will bring it into my main comp as well make it invisible and now i will apply it to this material here so i will apply it to my diffuse texture and you will see what this does in a moment and yeah it looks quite funny but it doesn't look how i like it i will just invert these strokes now so let's bring in a tint effect and actually let's borrow also the colors here from these waves here so i will just copy this over copy this effect and just paste it here and now just swap the colors and this way we will now have this result and i like this way better so this is a pretty cool result uh, one small problem we still have the waves inside the reflection obviously so let's change this like so and we also have them in the bump and we will change this also to the strokes and you see that this looks really cool now this creates a really nice look okay so far so good so you see that you can yeah spend more time use different textures and and improve these materials on your own but i think for the sake of this tutorial i will stop here with material creation and uh, i will move on to the last step and this is bringing in a volumetric light so to bring in a volumetric light i want to add another light to my scene and i will use a spotlight for this now so let's use a spotlight okay and actually i want to get rid of my parallel light now or just turn it off for a moment i want to position the spotlight right in the middle of my scene so i will just put it to 960 times 540 and zero on set now it's right in the middle here and of course our spotlight has a point of interest and i want this point of interest to be right in the middle of my composition or my scene so i will create a new null object make it 3d and use this position to to catch my point of interest so i will just all click the stopwatch and pick with it to my position this way it won't move anymore and now i can position my light here properly good now let's rename this light i want to name it v light and this has a reason that i will show you in the next step now let's add a volumetric light and you can do this either here or you can also right click and choose volumetric light and now it should already be visible yeah there it is you see that looks really cool so let's play with this a little bit first of all let's colorize it so i want to have bit of a bluish tint in this light and now I will change a few settings and by the way if you want to learn more about the volumetric lights I will not go through all the settings now I already released a tutorial that shows volumetric lights quite in depth and this was the tutorial about the planetary scene with the asteroid belt if you remember it uh, and if you didn't see it then I would recommend to watch it if you want to learn more about volumetric lights now I want to change the distribution here from 50 to let's say 25 to make it a bit more intense. Now this, that's a bit too much. Let's go with 35. Yeah, that looks quite nice. And let's also make sure that our light is just a little bit higher in the scene. So we'll just drag it up a bit like that. Looks a bit cooler. Good. And the really spectacular thing with these volumetric lights happens when you turn on shadows. So let's do that right away. Let's go to our main Stardust settings here and then we have these render settings and there are shadows. And if you turn these on, you will see what's happening now. 
now all these 3D elements interact with the volumetric light and they create these awesome volumetric shadows and this is really cool and of course also they are creating shadows on the surfaces here. And as an addition here I will also create some ambient occlusion. This will also help to sell this effect. And to finish it, the look, I will add two more lights to the scene. So let's go to layer, new light, and in this case it will be a point light. And I will make these actually a little bit warm. So something like that. And 100 is probably too much. So let's set it to 50 for now. And yeah, now I have one problem and this was why I named my light before so that I can specify which one will be used as volumetric and you can do this here inside the volumetric node there is this starting with option and you can just put in here a letter and in this case I will use V because this is my V light, my volumetric light and if I do this then it will just take my V light into, the, into account and it will not interpret my point light here as volumetric. So let's go to my four views and we'll quickly set up a very quick lighting here really. I don't want to spend too much time here now creating a nice lighting. This is up to you. You can play around there and believe me you can play around for hours creating nice light setups and nice materials and I would recommend to do that you know. My tutorials are just the starting point. I just want to give you ideas and hints. So, so you should never stop your work when I'm stopping the tutorial. It's not done when I stop the tutorial. This is just the beginning. Okay, and let me create one more. Duplicate this one here and bring it to the front so that we have a bit of light here as well. Maybe even further bring it down a bit. Where is it? It's up there. It's way too high. Something like that. And I will lower this intensity uh, down to 25. Okay, so as I said, a really quick light setup. Like this. But it looks cool. Really like it. Not too bad. And as a last step, I want to increase the look of our basic concrete material here so so that it looks a little bit like in the preview and we can do this by just going to this preset material and I will just turn off this texture or actually I could also turn off the opacity here let's see whether this does the same then it should get whiter yes and now I can change the color to something dark yeah that's it that's more or less it now you can change the roughness a little bit and actually, if I change this to glossiness, yeah, this should do. I'm already satisfied with this quite a bit. Okay, so far so good. So I think that this is it. Now, of course, before you render, don't forget to turn up the quality because I turned it down to medium. And if you now turn it to high or very high, if you take a look here now, at these shadows here take a look now they are smooth and they are looking really good and that's totally awesome so as a last step in this tutorial i will create a quick run preview and i will be back when it's finished and then we take a look what we created Okay, so the RAM preview is finished and I think that the outcome is really awesome. If you take a look here, it's awesome. And in the end, he's, he's catching one with his neck. That's really funny. So I really like it. Uh, I just wanted to tell you two more things that I realized. Uh, first of all, I forgot one thing. Uh, I should have given these particles a random rotation because now you see when they are born, they're all born in the same orientation, in the same rotation. and. I should have changed this before calculating the cache, the physics cache, and this is pretty easy. You just go to the particle node, and inside the particle node you can then just apply a random rotation to your particles. Now this will have no effect, they are the rotation properties, and you just set it to a random angle. As I said, now this has no effect because I already cached this, and I'm reading these data here out of the cache. But if you do that before you 
cache yours, then you will have a random rotation that will look a little bit more natural. And the other thing, and now of course my preview is, is gone because I changed this angle here. Mm, okay, I don't care. And you see that this texture is not sticking to the model and this has to do with the planar projection. So this is just the downside of this cheating technique here that this will not stick to the model but it will be projected and so it just moves and slides all over the place. But in this case, in this abstract style, it really doesn't matter at all, I guess. Okay, so this is it with this tutorial. I really hope that you learned something, that you got inspired and that you will be able to create awesome things using these techniques that I showed you today. And if you want to have this project, you can download it from the superluminal.tv website. Okay, so thank you very much for watching and I really hope to see you soon. Goodbye.